If an all expenses covered summer of fun in the United States is something you are considering for next summer, then this video is probably for you. My name is Matt, a 22 year old from Hertfordshire here in the United Kingdom, and this is my Camp America experience. As the title suggests, I've just got back from spending an incredible summer in the United States working at a summer camp in Pennsylvania and oh my god, have I got an amazing story to tell you all today. I'm very hopeful that this video could be the determining factor that made you want to go ahead and take the leap and find yourself working at a camp next summer. As my channel name would suggest, I absolutely love to travel. I'm going traveling this winter, I'm gonna be going to Asia and Australia and possibly even New Zealand as well this winter. Being away from home for an extended period of time is something that I'd never really done before and I guess summer camp was the perfect opportunity to trial that. Coupled with the fact that I love my sport, I'm obviously into tennis, I enjoy football, I like running, don't get me started on the Olympic Games. The fact that I'm very into my sport, working at a summer camp just sounded so ideal, it sounded completely up my street. If you're sat at home right now feeling like this is something you can relate to, then grab the opportunity while you can. You definitely will not regret it. In terms of getting the job, I went with an agency called Americamp. Now, Americamp have very kindly offered me a £30 discount for anyone that clicks on the link below and signs up to Summer Camp following this video. It's actually Matt30. I'll put it on the screen right now and put it in the description. You can go and check that out. Of course, if you have any questions following the video, I'm also gonna drop my email as well so you can obviously ask me any questions maybe about the camp that I specifically went to. As I say, Americamp, that's the agency that I went with. I saw their Instagram post and I just thought they looked like a very trustworthy agency. I have my top here. This is my Americamp t-shirt. As you can see, they gave this to me at one of the meetings that we went to in London prior to departing to the States. It was just such a cool experience. And uh, yeah, they're a very, very friendly agency. They were very helpful. They made a stressful situation, obtaining visas, getting back DBS certificates, much less on my shoulders. Could not recommend them enough. And as I said, if you do watch this video and feel inspired to get yourself to the States to work at account next summer, then click the link below. It's Matt 30 for a 30 pound discount on the fees, which aren't even that much anyway. And America can't pay more than any other agency. I know other agencies were paying 1800, 1900. My agency was paying me 2000 and now they've actually increased their salary as well to a minimum of $2,250. Not a bad sum of money when you consider all your food, all your drink, all your expenses whilst at camp are covered. There are a few expenses that we'll go into a little bit later, but for now, let's get to the fun stuff. I obtained my visa literally a week before departing. I flew to Miami and literally got my visa a week before. It was a very stressful time. You can imagine I'd also just recently quit my job as well, unsure of whether I was even gonna be able to go to America. Had to pop down to London to the US Embassy, which was a cool experience, of course. I was there for a couple of hours. I met, of course, with a load of different people who were asking all loads of questions about why I was going, who I was going for, how long I'd be going for, and at the end of that, I obtained the visa. They gave me the J the J1 visa I obtained cost me £160 and it gave me two months of working and one month of travelling either pre or post camp. I actually broke mine up. I did two weeks in Florida before and two weeks did like a road trip after which I'll go into a little bit more detail on later on in the video. But yeah, before camp I landed in Florida. We did Miami, we did that for a few days. Then we went to Orlando, did I think 10 days in Orlando. We did all the different theme parks. Following on from Orlando, we got the bus to Atlanta, Georgia before using the world's busiest airport to fly to New York City before the next morning getting the bus to Pennsylvania. It was a three hour bus ride with my new colleagues who I'd just met the night before. We had like a bit of a pizza party and uh, yeah, it was obviously a really nice experience. But that then leads me on to arriving at camp and what an experience that is. Picture this, dropping 400 international strangers into a plot of land filled with lakes, tennis courts, football pitches, the list goes on. The moment of arriving at camp is so surreal. We're all just as nervous as each other. We're all in the same boat, so that pressure really alleviates off your shoulders 
very quickly as I've now got friends in Mexico, Peru, Hungary, Brazil, even Australia. People come from all over the world to work at these summer camps. It's such an unbelievable thing to be a part of. Looking back on it, I am so pleased I got involved. I definitely do not regret it. The rest of that day is kind of weird. You can imagine we're now hanging out with 400 strangers who we know the names of but know nothing about. We've had like a whole tour of the entire camp. We've eaten together, we've played games together, we've gone and played tennis, we've played some football. All I can really describe it as is being like a kid again. You drop there in that moment and it definitely sets your mindset for the remainder of the summer. Orientation week is quite the experience. It's that week of training between arriving at camp and the kids turning up the following weekend. And what a moment in time that is. During this period, as you can imagine, 400 adults being dropped into a place at one time. Many treat it like Love Island, but personally, I used it as an opportunity to make friends from all over the world. Estudia Espanol con mis South American amigos. <laughs> Sudamericanos, I think. South American, I'm not too sure. But yeah, learning Spanish with my new South American friends and uh, of course hitting the gym four times a day at least. There's lots of spare time, lots of time to enjoy yourself and uh, yeah, I guess going in the pool is a personal highlight as well. During this period we're learning all about the different cultures, the different rules and restrictions, but also how to look after these children. The majority of us coming to camp had never worked with kids before, so I guess learning how to speak to a child and how to you know, deal with alleviating any pressures or problems that may arise. You have to imagine they're 10 years old, there's going to be problems that arise, but it's how you deal with those scenarios that goes a long way. Other sessions including accepting everyone for who they are, I guess dealing with certain situations which aren't very nice, you can imagine what those would be, especially in America at the moment, it's not obviously a nice topic, but it's something that's very real and uh, something that we're all made aware of from the get-go. And to finish orientation week on a positive, we had a massive party. We had like a DJ come in and it was just such a lovely experience with all my new friends from all over the world. And uh, yeah, of course, looking forward for the arrival of the children the next morning. Arrival day situation was very overwhelming, as you can imagine, 800 children from all across America, mainly from New York, New Jersey, uh, I guess Maryland as well, but also some kids from the likes of Florida, from Colorado, from California, all across the states really. You're meeting all these people at once. It's such a surreal experience. Very, very overwhelming. You can imagine they want to know everything about you. They want to get to know where you're from, what you've done, what your favourite sport is, who your favourite NBA player is. At that point, I didn't even know any of the team names, let alone the players. But of course, as you can imagine, that certainly changed as the summer went on. And of course, if any of my fellow co-counsellors are watching or any of the kids, hello guys, it's lovely to see you again. And of course, I'm so excited to come back and work with you all next year. Got a few things to do this year before I'm going to about 18 countries, I think, before returning to Pennsylvania next summer. But I absolutely cannot wait. We're gonna have a great time. I guess that nicely leads on to the next topic, which is gonna be the highs and lows, not many lows, of this amazing experience. I've actually written down a list of highs, as you can see here. There's quite a lot of stuff to go off. I don't want to try and memorise it all. We don't want to be sat here all afternoon. Living and working in America is one of the main highs for me. America, as you can see, my wallpaper behind me, this is New York. I've always loved America. Some of my earliest travelling memories include America, well, most of my earliest travelling memories include America, Florida, New York, LA, California, oh, it's the same place, but you know what I mean, I've just always loved America, so to go and work there and live there for free and get paid for it was such a cool experience. Job satisfaction, look, you're not sat behind a desk in an office, you're out and about, you're enjoying yourself, you're playing with water guns, you're playing football with these kids, you're playing tennis, you're doing all these amazing activities. There is so much fun to be had working at a summer camp. It's probably one of the least stressful, but most stressful jobs you'll ever have. In terms of stress, of course, you're dealing with 15 children at once. You can imagine that comes with additional pressures, which I'll mention later in the video. Activities, you're playing all the sports under the sun, tennis, rugby, football, cricket, golf, the list goes on. Not only are you playing sports, you're also getting involved in other activities as well. You've got ceramics, you've got painting, you've got fine arts, you've got cooking class, you've got sewing, 
the list goes on. There are so many activities to keep these children occupied and you get a good go at them at least a couple of times throughout the experience. Relationships with kids and colleagues, of course, goes hand in hand. Whilst you're out at camp, these kids are looking up to you, they're inspired by you and they are not ashamed to tell you. It's such a wonderful feeling to make these connections with these kids because you can imagine, think back to when you were seven, eight, nine years old, people in your life at that moment had a big impact on maybe some of the decisions you made, maybe some of the things that you went to do on in life. I guess it's nice to know that I was now one of those people that these children are gonna remember for the rest of their lives. Of course, colleagues as well, as I mentioned, have got friends from all over the world, South America, Southeast Asia, even Australia. Matt has a party, if you're watching, I know you're down there in Melbourne at the moment. It's so cool to know that I've got friends from all over the world. And uh, yeah, of course, I look forward to hopefully seeing them all again at some point in the future. Great management. What I mean by that is I've just finished working in recruitment for the last three years in a sales job. You can imagine having pressures and targets piled on top of you. It builds up from time to time. And to be able to work a job where you decide what you do, as long as you get to the activities on time, as long as you find things for these kids to do, there's really no pressure in terms of what you get up to. We are there with the sole purpose of making sure these children are having the summer of their lives. And as long as we complete that, there's absolutely no problem at all. Food is great, but a little bit repetitive, as you can imagine, on week one, it's brilliant. You're there having different foods, different cuisines from all over the world. After about three to four weeks, you do start to notice it is getting a little bit repetitive. When you get to Friday night and you know it's chicken palm, of course, it is a bit of a feeling. You know, you kind of want something new, but at the same time, you're not paying for your food. It's all part of the experience, and uh, there's always the salad cart anyway. No phone. Now, although I'm holding it right now, no phone for me was definitely one of the highlights that I didn't anticipate would be a highlight until I got to camp. Of course I knew I was gonna be hanging out with children all summer. I didn't think it'd be appropriate at all to have my phone on me. So when they told me that I'd be locking my phone up, that was not to be unexpected. We were allowed to go on our phone between 10 p.m. and 12.30, half midnight basically. Not being allowed on my phone for me was really nice, of course, mainly being online for my videos on TikTok, YouTube and Instagram, of course, to get away from that for a while was uh, yeah very refreshing. Of course, not being able to speak to my friends and family was tough at times, but it made the calls during the moments I was allowed my phone that little bit better. So look, I'm absolutely not complaining. It was really nice to leave what was going on in the real world outside the gates and just make the most of the time that I had at summer camp. The weather is definitely better. Now don't get me wrong, although it can rain, and believe me, it can rain in Pennsylvania, bearing in mind we're literally practically in the middle of the jungle, it is such lovely warm weather all summer. The mornings can be cool, but as you can imagine, once the sun has risen, it is very hot, especially in July time. I think around July 15th, it got to about 100 degrees, which didn't go down very well with us Brits. It was too hot for us. You can imagine most of us got very burnt, not to mention any names, although I'm quite sure one or two of them will be watching. Sunscreen application was so important, and another benefit of working at camp, they actually provided sun cream for free. Loads of the kids left behind a load of sun cream. It just meant we could take some for ourselves. Health and safety is another benefit. Although I was gonna leave this for the negatives, I got quite sick a couple of times whilst at camp. Of course, looking after I guess, 800, seven to 14 year old children, it's bound to happen. Illnesses spread like wildfire when you're younger, as you know, and of course being around all of these kids. I got ill a few times, I got strep A, which took about a month for me to shake off, if you like, and I also caught empatigo a couple of times as well, which is a really nasty, scratchy scab that you get in an infected area. It's just not very nice. The Health and Wellbeing Centre, they call it the Hawk, it's like the Health and Wellness Centre, was extremely helpful. They were always on hand, and uh, I guess they got me back in shape and ready to head back to work. General good vibes at camp, music playing everywhere. I've got to say Jonas Brothers and Sabrina Carpenter was playing all summer long. I've got it all downloaded on my phone now, as you can imagine. It's just such a nice memory. I hear the song and I think back to the first time I saw it, whether it was at the barbecue or on visiting day or at the disco before the kids even arrived. Songs are playing everywhere. Generally, everyone just seems so happy at camp. And if someone isn't happy, maybe they're missing a loved one or maybe they're having some trouble with their relationship back home. Everyone around makes sure the mood is lifted to give these kids the absolute best summer 
we possibly can. I guess it's important we go over some of the negatives as well now, although there's not very many negatives. One, of course, being illnesses. They spread like wildfire around camp, as you can imagine. As I mentioned, I caught strep A. It took me about a month to shake off the after effect. I'm not coughing anymore, but if you go back and watch the videos, well, no, you're not watching them yet. When you watch the videos that I made after camp during my road trip around the East Coast, I practically did the entire East side of the States following camp. And uh, yeah, during that time, I wasn't very well, as you'll probably see in the coming weeks and months as those vlogs get posted. It took me a bit of time to shake off. I'm feeling better now. But um, yeah, as I said, that's just one of the downsides that comes with working at camp you're probably gonna get ill at some point. There's lots of cleaning up as well. It's not so much a negative, more of just to make you aware of. Again, you, you know, you're looking after seven-year-olds, eight-year-olds, nine-year-olds. They just get up and kind of leave their food scattered all over the table. It's your responsibility to pick that up. And also the bunks as well. Of course, the bunks as well, we've got to keep in amazing condition, ready for visiting day. And uh, I guess just keeping them clean and tidy for the whole experience again is so important. And with 15, 10 year olds running around, you can imagine keeping the bunks tidy is not an easy feat. Lots of extra events that come as part of camp. My camp in particular had a load of different events, one being Sing, the next being Olympics. Visiting day, we also had like an alumni day, which is where past campers come and visit camp and see everything. There's also this big party at the end of summer called Bash, which is where all the kids, they get their dates sorted, as you can imagine. They do some nice food and uh, yeah, it's just a wonderful experience, a lovely way to end the summer. Olympics is where the camp is split in half, not by gender, but just by age and by, you know, siblings and rivalries, etc. Either on white team or blue team. This year I was on the blue team. Blue team had won for the last seven years, but this year, the white team won. You know, I'd have to be on the team that loses despite winning for every other year prior that I'm not there. Some of these events included like a uh, tug of war, which I actually really hurt my fit. I got a pretty nasty burn at the time. Had to go to the Hawk for that as well. That took a good month to recover from, but I'm fine now, as you can see. It also included like a big game of football, uh, what else? Baseball, we had Frisbee, like Ultimate Frisbee. Just loads of different sports, really. I can't really think of them all at the top of my head, but as I mentioned, the blue team lost. You can't win them all, and you've just got to keep the kids motivated and, uh, I guess, pick them up as and where you have to. You can imagine half the kids extremely happy, half the kids, uh, yeah not very excited. 4th of July also was a lovely day. I actually spent the 4th of July in Nebraska last year, so to compare that this year with Pennsylvania, it was a bit different, of course, in Nebraska. They were, you know, detonating TNT, and to go back this year to Pennsylvania again to have a parade, just to celebrate the 4th of July with the kids was such a nice experience. I was just so happy to be a part of it, really. Carnival was another event where they had all these massive bouncy castles and slides and water attractions just brought to camp. And as I say, I'm gonna put some shots right now on the screen from me with my friends and my GoPro, as you can tell. Again, with the kids, they absolutely love it. And uh, what more could you ask for as a 10 year old than to have an entire park filled with inflatables, balloons and candy floss and just have a great time honestly they loved it and that was definitely one of my favorite days for sure and to round it up we had a trip to dorney park dorney park is a theme park comparable with the likes of alton towers in the uk or six flags in new jersey for example dorney park is a six flags owned and run facility in pennsylvania i think it's about 100 acres worth of roller coasters unfortunately this wasn't my favorite day i was put with a group of children that opted not to go on any of the big rides but again fortunately i'd already been to florida a couple of weeks prior i was also going to carowinds in south carolina after camp as well so look, although it was a bit of a drag that day seeing all my other friends and some of the kids that i'd stay with in the bunk going on the massive rides while well, i couldn't as you can imagine i made the most of the day anyway we went in the arcades and went on some of the biggest rides that the kids would kind of let us you can see right now me and pablo my friend from mexico definitely not the wildest roller coaster i've ever been on but <laughs> Again, you have to just make the most of what you've got. All in all, an amazing experience that I had at summer camp in Pennsylvania. Again, I'm not going to mention which camp specifically, but if you email me or message me on my Instagram, I'm going to put the details on the screen right now. I would be happy to go into a little bit more depth 
and probably give out exactly which camp it is as well so that I can go into a bit more depth about who, what, why, when. All I can really describe summer camp as is amazing. That is probably the best word to describe it as. You can use the link in the description to go and check out AmeriCamp. As I mentioned, definitely the best option in terms of agency. They pay better wages, they are extremely helpful, and why the hell not? I had an amazing experience and I know for a fact that if you go through AmeriCamp, you will too. For £30 off, you can use the code MAT30 on the first link in the description. Just to let you know as well, I'm not you know, on any commission or getting paid anything for every one of you that signs up. I haven't partnered with AmeriCamp. I don't have the time to be an influencer for them. Of course, heading off to the Philippines in just a couple of weeks time. I wanna put all my eggs into this basket and all I really ask is if you do sign up through my link, if you could let me know, but also to stay in touch and let me know how your summer camp experience is off the back of this video, I would be very grateful. And I guess follow along, subscribe to see my journey, subscribe to see where I'm going. We're heading first of all to the Philippines and then to Vietnam and then on to Cambodia, Thailand, Singapore, China, um, even going to the likes of India and Sri Lanka and just some amazing places all over the world. You are not gonna wanna miss it and I really don't want you to miss out on that either. I guess now is probably a good time to also announce that I am about to start my new series, The East Coast Road Trip. This comprises of about 10 vlogs that I made during my time in the States following the camp. We start in New York before heading to Rhode Island, before going to Boston, Massachusetts, before flying to Nashville, Tennessee. We then got a bus down to Charlotte and then headed to a load of different other places. I think we went to about 14 states. I don't wanna give it all away, but I do wanna announce that that's now gonna be coming out on Mondays and Thursdays, two videos a week at 7 p.m. You can look out for those on the channel. Keep in touch and keep an eye out for those videos. Those are coming in the next couple of weeks. I can't wait to bring you all with me around the world. We're going to so many cool countries before heading back to camp next year. Next year, I'd like to make some more videos in my days off. You know, we go to the likes of Binghamton in New York and Scranton in Pennsylvania, just to name a few. So that would be cool to bring the camera along there and to show kind of what you get up to on your days off. So I guess that's about it for this video. I really appreciate you for watching and I hope I've sparked some inspiration in your mind about coming and joining me in the States next summer for another whole summer of summer camp. I keep saying the word summer, I'm so sorry. It's really annoying, but that's just what it is. It's summer camp, it's such a great experience and you will definitely regret it if you don't put yourself out there and give it a go. So look, I've been Matt, you guys have been so kind for watching and uh, yeah, I look forward to seeing you next week when we start the new series. See you later. I know the quality won't be amazing, but I just want to show this. Look at this for a view. It's currently Monday the 15th of July. I need to show you this. A massive storm out here at the moment. Oh my.
as you can imagine I'm getting attacked at all angles at the moment by mosquitoes and oh, other bugs as well <laughs> it doesn't always rain here in fact the weather is really nice on most part I mean you can see I've got a nice watch tan at the moment the Sun is bright the Sun is out all of the time it is extremely hot most days are 30 31 32 or 90 if you're here in America and only America I'm not sure anyone else uses Fahrenheit but I think I'm gonna have to bring my GoPro here aren't I I'm gonna have to Can I go on your shoulders now? Yeah, go on then. Okay. I can't get on. Come on. Shots of me, let me get a shot of you. Oh snap. Got it. There it is. <laughs> the main man, Austin, hey, but not from Austin. Going up this hill, bro. Sweet. See you in a bit. No, you should go faster. You should like run through all the other I can't stuff. run, you're on my shoulders. No, I mean like try to like speed back through everyone and go faster so you can weave through everyone. And then like show pictures of the fire. Go on then. You got this. Yeah, Be careful. Oh my god. Where is it? Oh my god. I don't, I don't see it. Where is it? Oh, I thought that was it over there. I think I got it. It's the last day of summer camp. It's all finished. Guys, that's the bunk there. This weather is crazy. <laughs> 